with Lainey here. Um, today I'm going to be cooking um, my sing ramang, which is also known as uh, salted short ribs. This recipe is a staple in our home and it's like something we eat every two weeks or so because the kids love it and it's good for adults, good for kids, and you can't go wrong with um, you know meat and rice so I'm going to show you guys how I do mine and the following ingredients that I have set out here is how I cook mine um, you're going to need some fish sauce oil I have garlic salt and garlic powder set out because uh, I kind of use both depending on uh, what taste I'm trying to acquire but um, I like mine anywhere between salty and sweet my husband prefers the meat to be sweeter but um, I try to accommodate everybody's taste but that we do um, in between then I have the sambal chili garlic sauce if you like spicy I have my um, oyster sauce salt and pepper and then we have our chicken bouillon powder then I have a um, whole rack of short ribs here that I got from Walmart. You can get this from the Asian store. If you buy like a rack of uh, baby back ribs and you just have them cut it long ways, um, that works too. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to chop this up uh, in between the bones and I'm gonna put it into this bowl here with salt and water. I'm gonna let it soak for a little bit just to get rid of the impurities. Um, or you can boil your meat. I've seen people do it different ways, but that's how I like to do it. Then I have this big pot here that's for my meat. I just washed and cleaned it. And then we're gonna start a caramelized sauce um, once it's uh, ready. So stay tuned and I will, oh, I'm sorry. And I also have garlic. I can't forget about my garlic. So once I get all this prepped and ready, I will um, have the complete video for you guys. So right now I'm going to be cutting my meat. I um, cut it in between the bones here. That way it's, you know, it's still a good chunk of meat you get here with bone in. And this doesn't have a lot of fat, which I really like. But, um, so I cut it between the bones here. I'm gonna stick it into my bowl. And if, you know, I don't like to feed my family a lot of fat. So usually what I like to do is I like to trim off this excess fat if it does come with your meat. And then we just kind of discard that. And then, um, We'll cook with the rest but i tend to notice that at walmart they kind of trim the fat for you which i really like because at the asian store they kind of have a lot of fat on their meat and by the time i cut all the fat off i'm left with like hardly any meat so this is kind of why i like to buy my meat when i cook to call um uh so that's why i buy it there this one doesn't really have a lot of bones in it so i'm just gonna Cut it long ways. Okay. I'm gonna cut all this up. And then once that's done, I'm gonna have my, all my meat soaking in the um, bowl for a bit with some salt and water. And we're just gonna let the impurities wash away. Um, I usually soak it about a good uh, 15 to 20 minutes and that way it will give me time to prep everything else while it's soaking and when that's done we're going to drain it real well because we don't want our meat too wet because if it's too wet I feel like it doesn't caramelize properly and that's just from my experience so but everybody has their own way of cooking it and um, I love to hear how you guys cook yours or if you like the way I cook mine please give me a thumbs up and uh keep following my channels. I'm trying my best to make more each and every day, but with kids and school and work, um, I know I've, I've had my friends tell me that, you know, I need to show my face in my videos, but half the time I'm walking around looking like a bum. And so I'm going to show my face. I like to look at least, you know, somewhat decent for you guys. So be patient with me and it will be coming shortly. Okay, so what I have here is all my meat chopped up. Um, as you can see, I like ours kind of like, you know, big because when you cook it, they do shrink a little bit. So um, I like mine in chunk size like this. 
Um, as of right now, I am going to start with some cold water. And I have my salt here. What I'm using is kosher salt. I'm going to put about two spoons of this kosher salt into my meat. And then I've already washed my hands. Um, good hygiene is definitely important. I'm going to mix my meat in here. Make sure that all the salt gets around it. And as you can see, some of the impurities are it's already coming to the surface here, but we're going to let this soak for a good bit, like 15 minutes or so, and then we'll get it cooking. Okay, so my ribs have been soaking for about 15-20 minutes, and as you can see, all these impurities have come to the surface. So what I'm going to do is we're going to drain it, and then we're going to rinse it, and then let it dry. I'm going to rinse it under some cold water. Got my strainer here. We're going to try to rinse the impurities out. And then I'm going to leave it in this uh, strainer so it can get all the water and dry out before I add it to my, my pot. At this point, you want to make sure that your pot is nice and hot. I have my pot on about uh, medium high right now, and I'm going to be adding some vegetable oil to the pan. Um, we have about three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Um, most people think this might be a lot of oil, but you, you kind of need enough oil in the pot to start the caramel sauce. So three tablespoons, two tablespoons, whatever you guys prefer is fine. But I've seen where people don't put enough oil and that sugar burns really quickly. So you want to make sure it's enough to cover the pot. Um, here I'm going to add some white granulated sugar to my pot. That is about two tablespoons and you don't want to stir. You want to make sure that um, this stays where it is. So I'm just going to be picking up this pot and I'm going to swirl it around. But we do not want to mix here because this will mess up the caramelization part. So the brown sauce is very important to make soon call. Um, a lot of people mess up on this part and the reason why is because if you're not watching this fire or if the fire is too hot, that sugar will brown real quick and then it will become hardened and then you can no longer make your sauce. So keep an eye on this. Once you see the sugar starts browning, a bit, you can pick it, up, pick it up, swirl a little bit more. That way the oil will, you know, nice and coat the sugar and then um, it will be ready for the meat to go in. Make sure that the meat is drained really well before you add it to the pot. And be super careful right here because this is where the oil is really hot and you got sugar in there and it will splash, so be careful. Once the meat is added in, um, then you guys can go ahead and use a slotted spoon to mix the meat around. Um, you want to make sure you do this quickly and Oh yeah, I dropped some meat, so I'm going to wash it off and then throw it back in the pot. Excuse the mess, guys. This is what I look like uh, after I pick up my kids from school. So, um, this is real life cooking. Nobody dresses up and looks like a Barbie doll when they're cooking. So, anyways, um, alright, we're going to mix the meat. Mix it real well, stir it around so that all the sugar and the caramel sauce can uh, coat the meat. And once the meat gets nice and brown, um, you're ready for the next few ingredients. So everybody cooks this a different way, but the way I'm showing you is the way I learned it. And so the most important part, important part is to make sure the meat gets caramelized before you start adding the other ingredients. Or else everything would just get watered down and nothing tastes really great. Next to my pot over there, you see my gun going, so I have two things cooking at once, which in my next video, you'll see my gun be, uh, I'm going to pose too, so 
I have two things cooking at once, so lots of good videos coming up for you guys. <clears throat> While the sun call is cooking, I still have my heat on uh, between 4 to 5 and on my burner 4 to 5 is medium high because um, we don't want the meat to burn and we don't want it to get too hard and um, you know chewy so we are going to keep it at 4 and 5 and then once that gets nice and brown I will lower the heat later on to let it simmer and then it will get nice and thick and the sauce will come out even prettier but as of right now I, uh, I just added about a handful of the white part of the green onion usually most people add this at the beginning which I don't understand why because in the beginning of its own call recipe you normally would wait for the sugar and the oil to caramelize and when I see people add green onions it doesn't make any sense to me so for my recipe I added at this time and then that way it will cook with the meat and give it flavor um, now the meat is nice and brown we're going to add the fish sauce. The kind that I'm using, you can use three crabs or you can use the one I have which is called the Fu Wook brand. Um, either one's fine, but I added about two tablespoons of the fish sauce into my meat. And then I have garlic powder here. Again, like I said before, I don't really measure my ingredients. I cook to taste, but if I had to give you guys an estimate of how much garlic powder I added that would be a very good full spoon full teaspoon of garlic powder and then if you guys like garlic add more if you don't like a lot of garlic you know just add a bit but I add it for flavor and then this is the part where I add my oyster sauce it will be about two tablespoons full of oyster sauce and what the oyster sauce does is it gives the sun call a very nice brown color um, most people use um, the thick soy sauce, which is fine too, but Sunkal is, you know, depending on what your taste buds are, you want it sweet, you want it salty, you can use either one. It's, you know, very easy to make. My husband likes uh, his food sweet, so when I cook, I tend to cook around what he likes to eat, so oyster sauce is what I'm going to use, and if you're the salty type of eater, use the thick soy sauce and you'll only need about one teaspoon of that a little goes a long way oh look there's the soy sauce again there we go i guess i was cooking for myself and my husband so i did add a little itty bitty bit of the thick soy sauce to give it more color so as you can see the spoon I just showed you was a tablespoon and I barely filled up that spoon with thick soy sauce once that's added um, you're gonna let it cook for a little bit that way the juice will all come out and then at this point people are like why is my meat not caramelizing just be patient with it that comes towards the end to give it a little bit more flavor, I added about a spoon of the chicken seasoning. Um, that you can find at the Vietnamese store or if you have chicken bouillon or chicken bouillon cube on hand, you can also add that. I like my food a little bit spicy, so I will add some sambal to my soon call. So there's about a spoonful of that. Um, if my kids were not eating, I would add even more just because I like to I like my food to be real spicy but this is just to add a bit and the kids won't be able to tell if it's spicy or not but the kids love the food so it's kid friendly husband approved you can just feed the whole neighborhood with this pot of meat so here's a trick guys um, if you guys want to eat soon call you want a nice caramelized sauce at the end of this so this is why the coco rico goes in here um, I use coco rico because it is sweet and can't go wrong with coconut so I add about a whole can of that into my pot and then I'm gonna turn my heat up a little bit higher and then let this simmer for 40 for 25 minutes with the lid on and then I'm gonna take the lid off and then we're gonna simmer it again uh, just to let the sauce thicken a little bit for another 25 to 30 minutes 
But going back to the Coco Rico, um, I've seen a lot of people use like warm water and lots of sugar. And I, you know, don't want my family turning into diabetics. So Coco Rico it is. Warm water and sugar is fine too, but I find that you have to add a lot of sugar to even get the sweetness out of this uh, caramelized meat that we're trying to cook here. So Coco Soda works, so try that and see. But here's the end of my meat after about 25 minutes being covered and then 25 minutes of being uncovered. We're gonna let that simmer for a bit. And at the end of my meat, I like to garnish it with some green onions and some uh, Thai chilies and then just let it cook the rest of the way and then you kind of want the sauce to get nice and thick and um, if you like it liquidy turn the heat off if you want it to be like thick enough where you know um, you don't get any sauce in that pot anymore let it cook for a little longer I would say about 15 20 more minutes um, and then eventually all that meat all that sauce will evaporate I like to leave mine with a little bit of liquid because my family likes to put it over their jasmine rice um, and eat with that. So, mine's pretty simple. Um, I garnish mine with just some green onions and some Thai chili uh, at the end and then this is how the meat turns out. As you can see, a lot of that sauce has already evaporated and you have nothing but some thick caramelized sauce right there to eat with the rice. And then once the meat is nice and tender, uh, you can turn off the heat and then this is pretty much what it looks like. We serve ours with jasmine rice, cucumbers, and the fish sauce recipe I've already posted you guys see. And then there's my gun bee that you will see pretty soon in one of my next videos. So I hope you guys like this. Uh, please like this video and subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Thanks guys. Have a great day.